So many network marketers fall in love with a health and wellness product, and then they realize that there's an incredible opportunity to build the lifestyle and income of their dreams. But what happens when you get started and you run out of friends and family to talk to, and what you're doing on social media just isn't quite getting you where you wanna be? Well, the truth is it's probably not your fault. It just takes a little marketing know-how that you may not be getting from anywhere else. So on this podcast, I'm sharing with you the secrets that I've been able to learn from all of my top earner friends and mentors. I'm pulling back the curtain on exactly what it takes to get people excited about the wellness products that you have to offer, to help people improve their lives, and to get you to the rank that you want to be at. My name is Soraya Goddard, and this is Secrets to Marketing Your Wellness MLM. Hey guys, what's up, what's up? I am coming to you on Labor Day weekend. I'm recording some episodes that I'm going to trickle out over the next coming days. I'm so excited for this one because I think it's something that a lot of you struggled with. I know that because I used to struggle with it and it wasn't until my coach smacked me upside the head and taught me to think otherwise (laughs) that I really put it into perspective. And I am also pumped because I got this question from someone who reached out to me on Instagram and then we connected on Facebook eventually and she asked this question, or at least I think that's how I connected with her. Anyways, um, she asked me the question. I'm not going to name her because, um, yeah, well, I'm just going to answer the question and she will hear it because I think she's now subscribed to the podcast. So I want to talk about what happens when people you signed up don't want to build a business. How do you convince them or get them to see the potential in the business opportunity? Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the question that I was asked, and then I'm going to give you the answer, okay? So this person says, and I, actually this is not verbatim, but basically she says, she asked me, hey, it's really funny when customers open accounts, they always say, I know that people want you know, the product and I'll just refer people to you because I don't want to do the business. And so her question to me was, how do I change my approach and show them that they can build residual income that is willable to to their children and all the benefits that we all know come with a network marketing business? So I want to break this down. At its core, just because you believe in the business doesn't mean that anybody else has to. So if you were in any other job, if you were an investment banker or a real estate agent or a doctor or a lawyer or a grocery clerk, whatever, name a job, does not matter. Would you try to convince your friends that what you do is amazing and they should do it too? The answer is probably no, right? Like you might have some discussions about, hey, I love being a lawyer because, or I really enjoy my job, I love it so much. But you probably wouldn't say, oh my God, how do I convince that person to become a lawyer? Like, how do I convince my friend to go to law school to be a lawyer like me? You would never dream of that, right? And some of you are probably listening to this and you're going, yeah, but network marketing is different. It's different, Soraya. That's not the same as being a lawyer. Okay, fine. Um, Got it. Maybe I'll give you that. Yes, there are benefits. Yes, people, people can do this as a side job. Yes. We all know the amazingness of it, but that still doesn't mean that you should try to convince anyone of anything. In fact, that goes against everything that I believe and everything that I teach. And I know I only have like 15 episodes of this podcast, right? So you guys will learn that over time, but I never, ever, 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 ever want to convince anybody of doing anything that they don't already want to because it's ridiculous. That is the definition of being salesy and weird and pushy. Like, I I know I used this analogy before in a different episode, but what if you went into a dress store and you didn't like the dress that you were trying on, but the salesperson was like, oh my God, it's amazing. You should totally get it. It looks beautiful and I love it on you and I think it's the greatest and it's totally my taste and it's fantastic and I love it and blah, 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 blah. Like, you would be like, oh my God, this girl's crazy and I want out of here. Not only do I not want to buy this dress, but I'm never coming back to the store, right? It is the same thing. So I'm saying all that to say you should never, ever, 
ever try to convince anybody to do the business. Now, that said, you can share the benefits that you have in a casual way. Maybe that's in a customer group that you have, and maybe you just want to celebrate people that are ranking up, and maybe you want to celebrate um, you know, how your team is growing and how we're all having so much fun, and maybe you want to celebrate some testimonials every so often, very rarely, very rarely. If you hit that with a hammer, if you take the sledgehammer approach, trying to convince your customers to build a business, they will walk away. They will feel your energy. They will feel that you want them to be business builders and they will, they will sense that disappointment and they will walk away and they'll stop their auto shipment. So let's talk about that for a second. We should all love our customers that are on auto ship that are not building a business. We should love them. They are getting results on the products. They're buying them every month. They are happy where they're at. They are loving everything. So leave them alone. Let's leave them alone. Let's all pinky swear to each other that we will love on our customers and we will send them thank you notes in the mail and we will message them and text them and pay gratitude to them on all the team calls. And we will thank them so much for their loyalty and we will love on them and we will celebrate them instead of shaming them because they don't want to build a business, right? It's a huge distinction. And I will tell you, like I'm kind of preaching here, but, <laughs> but I used to think that way too, because if you are like me, which I'm sure this person who asked this question is, you want to build your business sky high and your goal is business and you see the potential in your body and you are sold and you are going to the mountaintop come hell or high water. But guess what? Not everyone wants to go there and that is totally okay. So we need to celebrate those people where they're at and love on them and support on them. And, and your goal should be for your team members who are customers to say, man, I absolutely love this product. Like I am not doing the business, but my girlfriend Soraya is, let me give you her number and you can enroll with her. How cool is that? How freaking cool is that? Like a referral is the highest form of a compliment. That's fantastic. So I say cheers to the people who want to refer the business to you. Cheers, cheers, cheers. That's amazing. Thank them, send them flowers, send them thank you cards, um, invite them to your Christmas party and be super grateful for that. So that's my advice. More on that, I want to share with you an analogy that my coach, Ray Higdon, who I talk about all the time on this podcast, has shared with us. Um, he shared it with us in our private mastermind, and he also shares it in his private network marketing community called Rank Makers, which you are, if you're not in there, you should be in there. Um, and I don't get any money for that. I just believe in it. And I think it's amazing. So anyways, he shares that you should think of your customers as members in a gym, right? So if you were a gym owner, would you go to the dude who maybe is a little bit overweight and maybe is on the elliptical machine and he's just like kind of farting around and maybe he's got a magazine and he's only on the elliptical machine at a level two and he's just kind of hanging out. And then he goes to the table and he gets the free bagel at the end of the workout. And then he goes on his merry way. And guess what? He shows up three days a week and does the same thing. Would you go to him and be like, hey, man, you know, it kind of sucks that you're not making any progress. And it kind of sucks that you're not all yoked yet. We need to get you yoked. Like we need to get you some muscles. We need to get you to lose some weight, right? You would never dream of doing that. And that's a ridiculous example, but it's kind of the same thing as what we're talking about when we want to convince our customers who are loyal and amazing and happy and on the product and paying their membership. Uh, Ray says, scratch that, not membership, auto ship, right? Like Freudian slip. So they're paying their auto ship, right? They're getting their, their, their products from you and they're loving it. So if you like that analogy, go to Ray Higdon on Instagram and send him some love or follow him. But anyways, it's the same thing. And, and I think, um, I think we really have to just be careful to support people in their goals and not to put our goals in the forefront. You know, it is great to have goals. I am the most goal driven person you'll probably ever find, but we really need to make sure that we are thinking as business owners and that we are supporting our customers and our, our teammates, the people, our community 
at large and we're supporting them in their goals and not ours. And the more people we support in their goals, the more people that, you know, the more that we will grow our business. So how do you get more business builders, right? So that's the natural question then. Okay, so if I can't convince people to become business builders, how do I find more business builders? Well, there's a couple things you could do. Number one, you could just go enroll more people. Go enroll more people. I was a product user for two years before I saw the business opportunity. And Nobody convinced me of the business opportunity. Someone presented some information to me about the business opportunity and I made that decision. There wasn't anything that anybody was going to be able to tell me or convince me that you know was going to make me change my mind. But I did have a member of my upline share with me the opportunity and just say, hey, look, I think you might be good at this. I have no idea whether that's something you're interested in, but why don't you take a look? Now, she said that once, and if I had said no, then cool, she would have moved on. She didn't beat me over the head with it. She didn't make me feel bad. She presented that to me in a private phone call once, and I saw the benefit, and I ran with it. Cool. But I would say love your customers where they're at, and if you see someone that might be interested, and if you see someone that has potential, reach out to them once and just plant the seed, and then move on if they say no. Don't try to browbeat them. But the key in all that is go recruit more people. Go enroll more people. Go enroll more people. Go enroll more people. The more people you have on your team, the more people that you will have that may see the benefit in the business model. I think that's really the key. Now, if you are not currently talking to people about the business opportunity, um, maybe you want to do that. So it sounds like the person who asked me this question is talking about the business opportunity. So this would not apply to her. But if you're someone who's listening to this podcast episode and you're frustrated that nobody, nobody wants to do the business, well, have you shared the benefits of the business? Maybe you invite the entire team to a call where you and your upline or you and a friend or a crossline member talk about the things that have changed in your life now that you have become a business builder. Maybe you share a testimony about how it's changed your life. I would be very careful though, so I'm gonna give you that advice, but then I'm gonna give you a warning and I would say be very careful not to make people feel terrible about it. Tell them that it's okay to not do it. Tell them that, you know, hey, you're just throwing it out there. You have no idea whether it's for them or not, but you want to make sure that they understand that there is a business opportunity. Now, if people know that there's a business opportunity and they're choosing not to do it, then again, be grateful for their auto ship. Be grateful that they're giving you money and volume and points or whatever, you know, whatever you call it in your company every month and be grateful that you're getting a commission that is recurring. So freaking cool. So cool. But go talk about that with other people. Go talk about the benefits of the business and share your story. Share your story all over the place. Hey, look, I was on the product and then I saw the benefit of the business and here's why I thought it was cool and here's how it's changed my life and spread that and see how, you know, see what happens. All right, guys, I hope that helps you. I would love to hear what you think of this podcast. I'm getting a lot of good feedback, um, but I'd love to hear either way. If you have time, please go leave me a review. I would super, super appreciate that. The more you review, the more you rate it, the more iTunes will show it. And um, yeah, and then that's great. I can spread the word about how awesome our business is. Hey, maybe you want to share this with your teammates because maybe you and your teammates have struggled with this topic and you think that they might be able to benefit from this advice. So anyways, hope that helps guys. Talk to you soon. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed Secrets to Marketing Your Wellness MLM. Before you go though, I have something for you. If you are looking to grow your audience online via social media so that you can have people getting excited about your products and reaching out to you to learn more, then you need my cheat sheet that has 50 health and wellness Facebook Live topics that will attract an audience to you. It also walks you through the secret four-part formula that you can follow on both Facebook and Instagram that is proven to have people reaching out to you. And when you get it, I am also sending you guys an audio file for those of you who love to listen to the information on the go. You can get both of those things at www.sariagoddard.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sariagoddard.com forward slash podcast. 
S-O-R-A-Y-A-G-O-D-D-A-R-D.com forward slash podcast. Thanks so much. Chat soon.